You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Cabral Concept. Great to have you with me here today and looking forward to this Total Wellness Tuesday. Now, I had a different topic for you today, but with all of this New Year's health-based marketing, it was really important for me to bring this topic up. And that is because I want you to be able to understand on your own, when you see all of the hype, when you see all of the marketing going on right now, is to understand, is this the truth? Am I being marketed the truth or not? Because in my opinion, I have no problem with companies advertising their products to you or their diet plans, whatever it might be. But I want you to know, is the company dedicated to your health or are they dedicated to selling you a product? That's it. Now, I'm a huge supporter of the functional medicine industry. And I believe in their functional medicine-based products. I mention their company's names all the time on the podcast. Today, I'm going to do my best not to mention any company's names. I don't want to disparage anyone, and I don't want to necessarily build anybody up saying that they're better than anyone else. But what I need you to realize is that there are so many people out there right now trying to capitalize on the word detox. The problem with this is that it's simply not true. So I am someone that's after the truth. I am literally chasing the truth and trying to spread that message to others. And there are a lot of people who I consider good people in the health industry that are misusing the word detox, and they're confusing a lot of people about it. Not only that, but they're giving the word detox a bad connotation. Well, here's what I mean by that. So just for example, and I'm going to give you examples, but I'm going to tell you what this specifically means. There's a company out there right now, lots of ads. We're talking probably they spend about a million dollars a month in advertising. That's no exaggeration. It's unbelievable. And they're marketing a kind of a, a bundle right now, a package right now to you that includes different types of protein powders. It includes different types of juice-based powders. It includes probiotics. And they're calling it a New Year's detox. Well, the problem is that none of that specifically has anything to do with detoxification of the body. Now, the thing is that they most likely don't know that. I mean, I don't think that they're trying to do anything egregious to you, but that does not mean that it's actually going to detox your body. I saw another, again, this is a very, it's one of the, I believe it's the top 10 or top 20 podcasts in the health space right now. And they're doing their own New Year's detox. Everyone's doing a detox right now. Now, these people, great company as well, but they're giving you a diet plan and it gives you foods to eat for breakfast, foods to eat for lunch, foods to give you for dinner. And they're saying you need to detox your body. But the problem is that those foods aren't having anything to do with detox. So what we're being marketed are different products that don't necessarily do anything to detox the body diets that aren't necessarily detoxing the body. And really what they're talking about and really what they should be saying is that they are elimination-based diets and they're elimination-based plans. So when you see right now you know, the sugar detox, well, you're not detoxing your body of sugar. What you're doing is you're eliminating new sugar from coming in the body. You're doing a, it might be another one, a processed food detox, a no cola detox or Coca-Cola or diet soft drinks or whatever it might be. Well, those aren't detoxes. You're not doing anything to remove them from your system. You're simply eliminating them from getting back into your body, right? Which is a great thing that's very noble in and of itself. What I want you to do today is to realize that if you're looking at a plan that's working on detoxification, it actually needs to detox the body. And what does that actually mean? So that's why I want you to have the education so that you know it for yourself and that you can pass it on to others. 
And the last reason I bring this up is because I see so many articles out there right now, and I see a lot of people on TV saying that if anyone tells you that you need to detox, you need to run the other way. And I believe a lot of it has to do with these gimmicky things, with just using the word detox willy nilly, right? Like just for anything. Oh, it's you know, it's a it's a detox day. Well, what does that really mean? Well, it means I'm I'm just not going to eat any sugar, any cookies, any sweets. Okay, that's great, but that's not a detox. It's an elimination diet. And again, great thing, an elimination diet is part of a detox. I care so much about this health and fitness industry that I need us to realize the difference between a cleanse, a detox, and elimination diet. I want to explain to you right now, though, what a, what a detox really is. And a detox means this. A detox means elimination from your body out. Not from you putting something in, but actually from you taking it out of your body. And we have a beautiful process already built into the body called liver detoxification. And our liver is simply an organ. It's a very large organ, and it's located right underneath the right side of your rib cage. So just the bottom of your liver is actually right below it. The rest of it is protected under the right side of your rib cage. And you can actually put your fingers right under there. And during a naturopathic-based exam or a, or, uh, or a um, osteopathic-based exam, you're actually palpate the liver or you'll palpate the gallbladder. And you'll see whether it's swollen or it's congested or anything like that. Well, here's what happens. On a daily basis, your liver is actually cleaning all the blood in your body and it's circulating through all the blood in your body through your liver approximately every six minutes. And that goes on 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. It never stops. And your liver is one of the most important organs. It's tough to put them in order of importance, right? But your liver, your body would literally begin to shut down if your liver was not cleansing itself or detoxing itself is a better word to say on a daily basis and a minute by minute basis. Because what your liver does is it breaks down everything from your the food that you digest to your energy metabolism, your hormones, your overall cellular metabolism, right? Because cells are always breaking down and they're being removed through the liver. Well, how your liver works is this, and it's actually, it's probably best known and, and best seen that when you drink alcohol or any substance like that, any drug, any alcohol, when you put it in your body, your body immediately begins to metabolize those poisonous substance. And yes, believe it or not, alcohol really is a poison. If that alcohol was not eliminated from your body and it was allowed to build up, you would be dead. But what happens is the first phase, so the first part of our liver detoxification, always taking place is a group of enzymes. Now think of enzymes almost like you digest your food, right? As you start to chew up your food, if the food wasn't cooked above 118 degrees, as you break down the cellular wall of whatever the food is, it releases its own enzymes in plants and in fruit and those types of things. And that's great. It starts to break down the food. Now, your saliva also has what's called amylase in it, and that helps to break down grains and certain starches. Then it moves down further in your stomach, and we get pepsin, and we get HCL, different types of digestive juices that help to break down the food to mush, right? So it can then easily pass into our intestines from our stomach. Well, think of it this way. When you put alcohol or any substance or, I mean, believe it or not, right, we're exposed to 77,000 man-made chemicals every day. And you don't know it. Most of them are invisible. But you walk past, you know, you don't walk down that city street and there are cars going by. Well, all that exhaust is poisonous. Our body takes it in through our nose, through our mouth, goes right into our bloodstream, right through our lungs. And now our liver has to break down all those harmful metabolites. And again, there are 77,000 of those that we know of in the world. And there are most likely many, many hundreds of thousands of more, right, that are just out there. So here's what happens though. A group of enzymes, just like those digestive enzymes I was talking about, and they're part of what's called the cytochrome P450 family. You don't need to know this, but what I need you to understand is that this is hard science, that any doctor that goes to medical school, naturopathic doctor, chiropractor, they're going to study all of these types of, all of these courses on, I just call them the ologies, right? So it's oncology, kinesiology. Well, there's also toxicology. And toxicology goes through the science of how our body detoxifies. That's why it's important as health professionals that we use these terms correctly, because then we can also share with those people that say they don't believe in detoxification, the actual knowledge that, of course, our body detoxifies. And here's what it needs. Well, 
in this process, the first part of liver detoxification, these enzymes help to neutralize substances such as alcohol and the other metabolites that are outside in the environment. Without it, they would begin to damage our DNA. And what happens is as these begin to build up in the liver or toxins begin to build up in our body, it actually does damage our cells. It damages our cells as a whole. It can create inflammation and it can damage the DNA. It can actually begin to shorten what's called the telomeres, which helps with the aging-based process. The shorter the telomeres, typically people don't age as well or they're more likely and susceptible to disease, dementia, Alzheimer's, etc., they're more prone to oxidative-based damage. Free radical damage was basically like rusting from the inside out. On the outside, we see the spots on our skin. We see the wrinkles. We see the thinning of the skin. We see the hair loss, the thinning of the hair. But we don't realize that this is taking place on a daily basis on the inside and gradually filling up our rain barrel, gradually beginning to break down our body. Again, from the inside out. And we can't see this because it's invisible. I wish it was more visible to all of us because we would better understand it but it happens over time and that's where the damage takes place. Well, the nice thing is we know for phase one liver detoxification, we need a certain set of nutrients to help with that. Now, the great thing is this, is that by having these nutrients, it allows us to much easier degree break down these toxins. Well, what is it that we need that we need, right, to break these things down and get them out of our body? Well, we know through science that we need Vitamin B2, vitamin B3 called niacin, vitamin B6, paradoxal 5-phosphate. How about nature folate or natural folate, the methylated form of folic acid? What about B12? These are things that you've heard about, your B vitamins. They're crucial in order for your body to do its job properly. We also need glutathione, right? Glutathione is made from what? Well, it's made from glycine. You can use it in processes. I'll get into this in phase two from N-acetylcysteine from natural foods, which I'll talk about as well. And we need more of our vitamin C, our vitamin E. We need zinc. We need selenium. And we need certain phospholipids. We need healthy fats. This allows us to take all of the other items, right? We need all of the good plant-based, the antioxidants, to take fat-soluble toxins or the alcohol or even caffeine. Every day when you consume caffeine, your liver needs to break down that caffeine. If it didn't, it would continue just to build up in your system to the point where it sped up your heart rate so much, you'd end up with what's called a supraventricular ventricular tachycardia, where your heart rate's literally going 180 miles an hour and you can't bring it back down. Well, your liver is what's needed to help to keep equilibrium, to help to keep balance within your body. And that's why this very specifically happens within your body. But guess what? Over time, as your body's health had to deal with this for years, right? These toxins building up for years or you taxing your liver for years, it becomes more depleted of what? Well, of your B2, B3, B6, folic acid, your B12, your vitamin C, your coenzyme Q10, your antioxidants, your selenium, your manganese, your zinc, right? All of these things start to become depleted. And now phase one, that liver detoxification isn't able to work as well. So what happens? Well, your liver starts to become what we call congested. All that means is that it starts to build up with more toxins. Well, what does your body do? Well, your body puts them back into circulation. They were meant to be taken out of circulation and dumped. I'll talk about how they're dumped and how they're removed in a moment. But now what they do is they start to move to your fat cells, your adipose tissue, it's called. Why? Because your adipose tissue can safeguard them. It like puts them in a vault, basically, right? Let's say that you have food that's rotted in your house. It smells, but it's not trash day. You bag it up in a trash bag. You tie it up really tight so that it can't escape. Well, that's basically your adipose tissue. It stays there, but guess what? It still needs to be removed at some time, right? It still needs to be taken out, but the problem is this. Unless your liver gets what it needs, it can't do that. It can't work that process. So this is why we see a lot of people, as they start to try to lose weight, they can't. Their bodies have become over-toxic. Their bodies will not release all of that stored fat because as they release that fat, they release toxins. Guess where those toxins go? Back in the bloodstream. Why? Because that's what your body does. It uses stored fat as energy. But as that fat is broken down, along come the toxins. And now the toxins are back in your blood. And a lot of people then get these things called Herxheimer reactions. They get headaches. They feel fatigued. They get skin rashes, migraines, joint pain. And when that happens, you don't necessarily relate it to a breakdown in your body's ability to detoxify. Because on a daily basis, you can detoxify. 
and you probably do a great job just staying at homeostasis or just a little bit below as your body starts to accumulate. But if you ask it to do more because you just lost three, four, five pounds in a week and you don't have the right nutrients, you can start to feel the effects of that. That's why this is real. This is true. We see this in a clinical practice every single day. Well, here's the nice thing. As you have those nutrients and you can get them from Whole Foods, but you're not going to get them from Whole Foods unless you do have that well-balanced diet. And I'm sorry, but eating a super high fat diet that's devoid of a lot of good carbohydrates that are brightly colored fruit, brightly colored vegetables, you're not going to get that amount of antioxidants. And I'm not saying that you need to eat one way or another right now, but what I'm saying is that if you eat one way that's devoid of one macronutrient, carbs, protein, or fat for too long, you will become imbalanced. It may work for you in the short term, but it will not work for you in the long term. And if you do not include a lot of that fiber and plant-based nutrients, you won't even be able to sweep it out of your gut in the first place. If you don't have the fiber to move that peristaltic movement through your gut, you are not going to be able to remove these toxins because here's why. As your liver begins to connect with and dump these things from your system, here's where it puts them, in your intestines. That's the first place. That's its number one go-to, right? It has this nice little tunnel. It's a basically a passageway and it goes from your liver to your intestines. We learn this. Again, we learn this in anatomy, and we learn it in physiology and pathophysiology. That just means the disease-based pathways. There's this thing called a hepatoportal vein and the hepatic portal duct. All that means is liver to intestines. It's a vein and it's a duct, and they bring blood flow back and forth to each other. Well, they can also transport toxins, but here's the other thing, is that your liver begins to produce bile as well. Now, it can be stored in the gallbladder, but what we're looking to do is this. The toxins get mixed up with the bile. The bile is then dropped into the first part of the small intestine. Typically, it can be dropped into other parts as well. But along with that bile comes the toxins. Now, the toxins are bound up in the bile. If you have a normal bile movement, one bile movement a day, two bile movements a day, maybe even three, you are going to remove that from the body. That's why it's so important that we get the bowels moving. Here's the other way. So that's one way your liver removes it. The other way is it removes it through the urine, right? It can bind it up and it can remove it through the urine. I'm going to talk about the binding in one second. The last way, the last real way is through the sweat. Can't get everything out through the skin, but it's a great way to do it. So doing an infrared sauna is actually a form of detoxification. You are actually removing, you are removing, not just eliminating things coming in, but you're removing, right? It works. It legitimately works. And the last way is exercise because you can huff a little bit out as long as it's vapor-based, as long as it's gas-based. Not every toxin can come out this way. Not a lot can come out this way, but it can actually come out through your lungs. That's a great way to do it as well, along with that carbon, especially if you're doing that breathing, that diaphragmatic breathing right from the lower lobes of the lungs. Well, that's going to help. So now that we know that there's an actual passageway out, how do we get it as you're losing weight, as you are transforming your body, or you just want to get rid of these stored toxins that have been there for years? Well, here's what we do. We know what it takes. We know what the vitamins are that we need. We know the antioxidants, which are the cornerstone of phase one cytochrome P450 enzymes. But here's what it does. For the larger fat-soluble toxins, it creates what's called an intermediary metabolite. It just means like it's in between. It's a in between before we can eliminate it from the body. This is what happens. Your body needs the sulfur-based amino acids. It needs glycine, taurine, glutamine, and acetylcysteine cysteine, methionine. Okay? Let me repeat that one more time. Glycine, taurine, glutamine, N-acetylcysteine, cysteine, methionine. Now, it needs these to go through a process called sulfation or glucuronidation. That's always a fun one for me to say, glucuronidation. And it goes through this acetylation-based process, this methylation process. And I know there's a lot of people out there with methylation-based defects with my hand raised in the air right now as well, right? The MTHFR-based issues here's the problem. It's not a problem as long as your body is given everything that it needs. You might need a little extra. That's the truth. That's okay. But as long as you're getting your methylated B vitamins and you are taking in a lot of those cruciferous vegetables or a lot of those high sulfur-based vegetables, and which one are those? Well, those ones are the ones that are going to be more, again, of the cruciferous. It's going to be your Brussels sprouts. It's going to be broccoli. It's going to be cauliflower. Even asparagus is going to be one of those. Spinach, There's even a glutathione and an avocado, right? So when we look at that, we know that we're going to be giving ourselves the precursors to those things. But here's the problem. 
a lot of people, we go in these crash diets. We don't eat a lot of the vegetables because we're told to eat high fat only. We're told to just deprive ourselves of carbohydrates. So we miss, we miss these phase two liver detox potentiators. But here's the biggest issue. If you don't have the phase two detox, it gets ugly real fast. And here's why. A lot of people get the vitamins they need, but they don't get the second part. So now these things go back into circulation. These toxins go back into the bloodstream until they meet a partner that binds them up or that can break, I should say, breaks them down to a further degree. And that is exactly what happens, which is called this conjugation pathway. So the first pathway, cytochrome P450, that's the enzymes. Okay, it breaks things down and gets them ready to be eliminated, but it's the conjugation based pathway that breaks them down to then transport them into the bile, right, which will eventually go out into the stool, or it brings them into the blood and the kidneys will excrete them harmlessly from the urine. And again, the less optimal ways, the not as easy ways to eliminate it through the skin and huffing it out through the lungs. But all of this is possible. But as I just read you those nutrients, right? You need the glycine, the taurine, the glutamine, the N-acetylcysteine, the cysteine, the methionine, all of those things create what's called glutathione. Now, our body naturally produces glutathione on a daily basis. But our body was never really equipped to deal with 77,000 man-made chemicals. These are synthetic. Half of them, at least half of them, we know of have been associated with cancer, right? Not a mystery why cancer continues to skyrocket each and every year. It's an exponential growth. It's not a little growth. It's exponential since the 1950s and 1960s. Well, that exactly coincided with industrial-based revolutions and our making of plastics and different types of formaldehydes and all of these other things, bug sprays that go into the environment, all right? A lot of these things never break down. DDT from 60, 70 years ago is still in our environment today, even though it's been banned for decades. It does not break down. We can still find it in our soil. We find it in the, believe it or not, the serum blood of the placental cord in, in unborn children. I mean, this is how deep it goes, right? So we're entering life more toxic than we've ever been. But these, this is not to scare you. It's just for you to impress upon you the notion that we need to know what detoxification is. This is also why I do not want to disparage anyone else in the health industry because I love this industry. It's been my entire life now for over 20 years. When I got sick at 17 years old, my life was not about health before that. It was about sports, sure. And it was about you know all the normal things that a 17-year-old you know, kind of would be going through. But health was never one of those things. I was brought into the health industry because I lost all of that. I had no health really left in my body. If you can name an issue in someone's body, whether it be hormones or blood sugar, uh, inability to regulate weight, skin issues, headaches, migraines, fibromyalgia, uh, brain fog, you name it. I mean, name it. I was suffering from that because I was going through an immune system shutdown nothing was working properly. I couldn't regulate inflammation. And we know inflammation essentially is associated with 90 plus of all disease, right? So if, you, if that's the case, you can understand why all of these manifestations are starting to come through. So that's why I'm not trying to disparage anyone out there. But I think if you're a health professional and you're listening to this, we can't just use the names of health-based things in our marketing if they're not being associated with the proper thing. And that's because Everyone out there is trying to bring us down. They really are. Meaning like pharmaceutical industries and people who think that they're extremely smart, you know, scientists and PhDs. And again, I love PhDs. Many of my colleagues and friends are PhDs. I'm not trying to say that, but here's the thing. Everyone, a lot of times is just trying to sound smarter than someone else. That's it. And I don't want this podcast to come off like that at all. But what I need us to do is as health professionals, we need to stick together. I mean, we really do. Because everyone wants to take us down. And the reason is that what we preach, essentially, there's no price on it. There's no, I gave you the information today of essentially how to detox your body, right? The B2, B3, B6, natural folate, the B12, which is the methylcobalamin, glutathione, vitamin C, zinc, vitamin E, manganese, selenium, right? So those are all your, the oxidation based phase one. And then what's phase two? Well, Phase two besides, so I mean, phase one, even if you want to do it just through food base on a daily basis, what are you looking at? Well, you're looking at ramping up all of your brightly colored fruit and vegetables, kiwis and berries and grapefruit, right? 
and your other citrus types fruit? What about doing just a little extra lemon every day and lime? And like I said, all your brightly colored fruits and vegetables. And in phase two, your cruciferous-based vegetables, kale and your broccoli and your cauliflower and your Brussels sprouts and your asparagus and avocado. And then if you wanted to use a supplementation, well, what would you use? Well, in phase one, it would be the you know, activated B complex and it would be your antioxidants. And then in phase two, what would it be? Well, it would simply be anything with sulforaphane. Sulforaphane is one of the best ways to produce glutathione. Sulforaphane is what's in broccoli. It's the extract of that. And you could also use alpha-lipoic acid and you can use N-acetylcysteine. You could use glycine, right? You can use all of these things to ramp that up. And the pharmaceutical industry can't patent those because they're natural. These are natural byproducts of food. And so that's why I just I want us in 2019 as a health industry to hold ourselves to a higher standard. Let's not make all of this just about money. Let's not make all of this just about business. Let's not put profits over people. And I know that people are not trying to do this egregiously, that they just think it's fun, like it's a fun name. Oh, let's do a detox together right now. Let's detox ourselves of sugar. Well, that's not true. Like that is not how it works. And we're giving detox a bad name. We really are. We're looking at it from a fun perspective. Well, it is fun. I understand that. But there are people right now who are going to get cancer and heart disease and high blood pressure and type 2 diabetes and can't lose weight and they have migraines because of massive toxicity-based issues. And they actually need to detox. So by doing your diet plan or your supplementation-based plan or your whatever it is, like uh, whatever, you're not helping them detox. And that's the truth. Because you could just, again, but that doesn't matter. And again, I know it sounds like I'm coming down on people and I'm not. I don't want it to be that way. But those are all what people are showing you are elimination diets. And those are great. Do it as an elimination diet. I promote all of this wonderful health and fitness industry. I really do. But those are not detoxes. And I don't want to mistake that because we're starting to dilute what a detox means and we're, it's starting to get made fun of and all of those things in the media. And do I care about that? No. But here's how I see it. I see it as now there's going to be less people who truly believe in it, who believe that they should ever try it. And that's an issue. And here's why. Because it is, it is the thing that we're going to need as we go forward in life. Because I'll tell you right now, there's no regulation on creating more of these toxins in the environment. There really isn't. We just keep making more. When one gets banned, we just make 10 more. And I'll be, I mean, I'll be honest, there's a minimum of 77,000 in the US. There's 8,000 minimum over in Europe. Australia, that I like to think is a little bit cleaner. New Zealand, still thousands, thousands that are allowed in there. Like they, we know that these things cause cancer. We know that they do. And even just, again, pollution, just walking down the street with cars and their exhaust, as long as you're around exhaust. It's the, I mean, my one of my mentors when I was over in India, and I was in the foothills of the Himalayas, and I was at his clinic, very rural, nothing fancy, right? I studied at some beautiful clinics, and I studied at some ones that were not as fancy. And here's what he said. I was in the foothills of the Himalayas one day. We were just studying herbs. He was showing me how they grow wild and how you know you pick which ones, which ones are ripe, which ones would be great for harvesting, which ones you use the roots under the dirt, which ones you wouldn't. If it's growing around this, don't use it because it's chelating things from the environment. That means this particular thing is toxic itself. I learned so much, but here's what he also said. He said, look over there at that yogi. And there was a yogi over there. He's right near the Ganges River. And I said, oh, you know, okay, well, like, what about him? You know, because he always basically spoke very slowly and I obviously talk fast. And so I said, what's the point? <laughs> I didn't actually say that, but I was waiting for it. And he said, even this yogi, he said, even this yogi who drinks from the stream and he, li- he lived literally in what would be a treehouse. That's literally where he lived. He said, even a yogi living in the Himalayas still is toxic, still has toxins. He's still breathing the air in 2019 that's polluted. So yes, our liver is doing the best that it can, but it needs help. So we need to purposely be putting these good foods into our body every day. How do you know? Well, in general, go for an assortment of brightly colored fruits and vegetables. Now, the problem with a lot of elimination diets, a lot of time they eliminate a lot of the fruit in the beginning. Well, I understand we do the same. But what do you need to do if you're truly on a detox? You need to give yourself these particular vitamins, minerals, and amino acids. I write about this in the rain barrel effect. I talk about that. And the rain barrel effect, you know, all that information is, is there for you. 
But why I try to do podcasts like this as well is so that you understand the information, hopefully at a deeper level and how it applies to your own life and how you can use this knowledge and hopefully teach others. That's what it's all about. Because in my opinion, all of the different eliminations diets that I just talked about, elimination supplement protocols, all those things, they're not bad. They're not bad. I mean, for the most part, people are putting out good work and they're putting out good products. They really are. But if you're looking to truly detox, they're not going to help you. And if you're a new listener to this show, I'm not even going to name my protocol for you today because I don't want there ever to be confusion around the knowledge and the mission that I'm on right now and anything that I try to supply to you. So all I want you to do is look for a good functional medicine product out there right now, a good functional medicine detox. Because the difference with a functional medicine detoxification protocol is that it's based on the science. It's based on phase one, cytochrome P450 pathways and the conjugation pathways of phase two. And I know that sounds super complicated, but you don't need to know how it works. That's the nice thing. I explained that on the podcast. But as long as you give your body these nutrients, you're going to be doing its job. And if you follow a protocol that has you doing this, it has you doing some fasting within that protocol too, your body will know what to do. That's the amazing thing. That although that this has been a topic that I've studied in depth for many, many years, the amazing thing is this. I still can't see it working inside my body. I know that it is. I'm doing before and after lab testing on people. I see that it works. I mean, you can actually do a toxicity test. I'll link it up in the show notes today. But if you want to prove to yourself that you actually do store toxins in your body. So for anyone that's skeptical skeptical, (laughs) skeptical out there, you can actually do a toxicity test. You can do a hair tissue mineral analysis test for heavy metals, but you can also do something else called a toxicity test. I will link that up today. Simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash one zero six eight stephencabral.com forward slash one zero six eight i will make sure that we link up the toxicity test here today on that show it really is an eye-opening one and very simple since it's an at-home urine test that kids can do adults can do anyone can do no special preparation needed because it just shows you what your body's eliminating on a daily basis these aren't even stored toxins that would be difficult to do you'd actually have to do a biopsy on your adipose tissue, which is is not realistic. Most people are never going to do that, nor should they do that. That's unnecessary. So again, today, I, I hope that it did not seem like I was coming down or disparaging anyone in the health industry. This is the industry that I will live and breathe for the rest of my life. I hope to be a part of it, and I hope to promote others. And I promote all great functional medicine companies out there that are providing these phase one and phase two nutrients. And again, you don't need to be doing this on a daily basis. We recommend it every 12 weeks to give the body a boost. Then on a daily basis, yes, you can use an activated multivitamin, a daily nutritional support shake, anything like that, that contains what you need, right? The sulforaphane, it contains the methylated B vitamins, et cetera. But you don't need to do anything wild except try to eliminate the, you know, the, the toxins in your own life. And that's where the elimination comes from. Yes, you're not purposely putting yourself in harm's way. You're using more natural skincare products and shampoos and conditioners. You're not using aluminum pans. And you can check back on previous Cabral concepts for all this information and of course in the rain barrel effect. So if I can help you with anything, I'm happy to do that. Please feel free to ask at cabralsupportgroup.com. It's a free private Facebook group where we answer questions in that. And let me know on Instagram. I answer a lot of comments on Instagram, not as much the direct messages, but all of them for that today's post. Today's post is 1068, stephencabral.com forward slash 1068. I appreciate all of you who are doing on our current protocol right now. And I appreciate everyone that is tuning into the Cabral concept, even more so if you found this information helpful that you do share it with anyone else you believe it could serve. Take care, everyone. I want to sincerely thank you for your support of this podcast. I couldn't do it without you, and I mean that. I truly do. I also want to make sure you knew that we now have multiple ways for you to find your answers to the most difficult health, wellness, weight loss, and anti-aging questions. You can find podcast-specific topics like thyroid, adrenal, hormones, sleep, digestion, Ayurveda, and many more at stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts that will then link you to your favorite Apple, Spotify, and other podcast players. Plus, all new podcasts and weekly exclusive video content is being added to our YouTube channel at 
youtube.com forward slash Stephen Cabral. And that's Stephen with a PH. Head on over and subscribe so that you don't miss any of the exclusive content. Lastly, if you've ever found any of my podcasts or books to be helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a review on iTunes or your favorite media player for the podcast. Rating and subscribing to the YouTube and podcast allow me to reach more and more people and help spread my mission of healing throughout the world. Thank you again for being a part of this movement.